Welcome to another edition of the Corner Booth Podcast. I'm here along with Bill Brownstein of the Montreal Gazette and Leslie Chesterman. And we will have a special guest, by the way, coming up later on in the show. So stick around for that. Uh, but we're going to start today by talking about really the biggest story in Quebec right now in the midst of a pandemic, a strike at the SAQ. Heartbreaking. So, Heartbreaking. Leslie, you enjoy wine. <laughs> yes, I do. I do. So. I like my wine. I went into the SAQ at saint Sauveur the other day thinking that they'd restocked and I've never seen... Well, no, there was a strike at Christmas a few years ago where all the cases were on the floor. Do you remember a, that? Yeah, this is the, the shelves are empty. This is unlike anything I've ever, well, ever seen. Yes, but you can also find some, not deals, but you can find some wines that you never know existed before. You know, right. So it's kind of fun to see what's left. What the now, slim I'm trying, what, now, what do you mean by that? That you would never shop for because they were what? Too expensive? You couldn't find them? Or well, or because you don't have the choice. So you have to right. go towards that right. wine that you don't really so want. So a lot of so, good uh, Romanian wines. <laughs> And look what the I Bulgarian found. The Bulgarian section was well stocked, I must That's say. Yeah, the, okay, Bill, what do you have there? Smoky Mountain Moonshine. This is all I could find. I was looking for vodka. Did they not have a, <laughs> did they not have a smaller moonshine. bottle? Is that this the, was the smallest I bottle okay. I could find. <laughs> and uh, this is all I could find. So wow. I'll it's going to be a rough okay, but let me, let me ask, as you know, as we yes. both know, the yes. SAQ is considered an essential service. It's a pandemic, for God's sake. Right. Yes. How can a, they allow this strike to continue? Yes, because they know they've got us by the short hairs. I mean, what better time for them to strike before the holidays? You don't think they're going to get what they want in the end? Oh, of course well, they will. Well, to be are. fair, to yes. be fair, the lowest, the entry level salary at the SAQ was seventeen dollars, and uh, they had a lot of problems also finding staff for the stock room. So they're going to have to up their salaries. And we talked about salaries in restaurants. Uh, we should maybe talk about maybe that that is a bit low for the SAQ, which kind of always has been the place that we said okay. paid a lot. But where does our government make so much money next to the lottery from the SAQ? SAQ? Yeah, yeah. Billion, billions no, of dollars. No, they can't afford to. Maybe yeah. Lotto Quebec could sell that's some what of I the booze. Well, I think that's the way the lottery, to go. lottery, yeah. 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 But I, I, the other thing, I you know, I think it's, it's a pretty close vote, apparently, when management brought it to the union. It was rejected by 86%, 86 percent of them. 86%, yeah. yeah. How do yeah. you bring something like that, not knowing that it's not even close to what your your you know membership? Perhaps wants. they've been drinking too Apparently, much, a little too no, much because moonshine. Because they know, moonshine. like Bill said, that <laughs> yeah. they have them by the short hairs. Oh, I was going to say the curlies, short and yeah. curlies. Yes. yes. And, and the you other issue, of course, so that's the SAQ. Now you have daycare workers, support right. staff anyway, out on strike. What I find really weird in this one is the government has taken a full page ads trying to convince the public that the offer they made is good and they should take it and they have radio ads running for this too right. but the public is on side with right. the daycare workers yeah. not with the government government yeah. spending a lot of money to try to convince people who've already been convinced but what will be settled first the saq strike oh. or the daycare strike my money says the SAQ, SAQ yeah. But Absolutely. the daycare workers, yeah. ha especially the educators, Terribles, by the way. have been underpaid for a long yeah. time. Forever. Now they're talking about $30 yeah. an hour, but before it was miserable. And, uh, it's, and I think the parents want to support the daycare workers. And maybe also we should charge a little more to the parents, which we're not allowed to do. But could they make daycare a little bit more expensive to pay educators? You know, a better salary should it also come from the parents. Should it come from the government? I, when I All sent fair. my kids to daycare, um, I I always thought we were getting away with murder. You know, seven dollars a day, and it's government subsidized is government subsidized. And of course, some you know, in France they had daycare that was adjusted to your salary, and that didn't work because rich people started bringing in paychecks from their you know. Lo we have a great daycare system but we should take care of the educators okay. fair yeah. enough i'm waiting for the trifecta so you have daycare out saq out who's next for the bus. trifecta bus. stm yeah, yeah. absolutely there you yeah. go. buses there, and there metros you go. and then when that happens then you start to wonder there's an election only about another 10 11 months away right is that going to finally work is that the beginning of the chink in the armor for the cac because they've looked pretty teflon proof up until now right they're still teflon proof. you think yeah, yeah. Who, where does their support come from, Mary? No, no, but forget that. I mean, okay, I, I'm saying the STM, but you know what's going on now with CHSLDs, that RADCAN report that showed the government basically ignored what they yeah. were being told? Yeah. Still Teflon proof. Okay. Yeah. We'll come Still back to numbers that in 10 are very months. high. So All right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's move on from that and talk about the brilliant new PQ logo, the Parti Québécois logo, <laughs> uh, which they published just the other day. A and gas company. Sharp minds at the PQ with this very creative logo, which it turns out, oh, wait a sec was already used by a company in Kazakhstan 
a gas company there. So they've gone what, does Borat, this what does this say about the PQ? Drinking a lot of moonshine. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that that's unbelievable. And I mean, it's uh, it's, it's not exactly even close. The same. It's exactly the same. Yeah. That is unbelievable. But they can't keep that logo, can they? <laughs> I thought it was, I don't know. That's it's a good question. The colors. I thought you guys different. were kidding, but really, no, I just exactly saw it before. The same. The, it's exactly the same. Wait till Colbert, John Stewart, John Oliver get. It's only a matter of, of days. It's a matter yes. of seconds. Yes. Yeah. Uh, although I did think it would make a great uh, logo for Air Quebec. <laughs> if we ever had an Air Quebec, that could work because yeah. it kind of looks like a little airplane. It does look like a little airplane, doesn't it? Right. And get Borat right. to do the endorsement. Yeah, That'd no, be it's perfect. Yeah. Right. unbelievable. Yeah. But why did they even do it? Because French. the PQ logo itself, the original one, is great. Nothing I mean, you don't it. change the no. CN logo. You don't have to change that logo. It's the rebranding. It's and when people start rebranding. You know, we'd always say, like, when the newspaper would start redesigning, right? It's the end of days. I just don't get I mean, if you look at the logo outside of the fact that it belongs to somebody else, basically, it kind of looks like it's the PQ eating their own tail because it's just the circle with the head. Yeah. Interesting kind of, analogy. That's yeah. what it looks like, yes. doesn't it? Yes. All right. Uh, La Presse story today that says uh, the Expos are in negotiations, the Brofman Group, sorry, in negotiations with the provincial government to bring baseball back to Montreal. They say it'll cost about total, about a billion dollars. They need a couple of hundred million from the Quebec government. And this is to basically have a team in six years, share it with the Tampa Bay Rays. Yeah. I don't see how this is going to fly. Let me stop you there, Bill. Yes. It's not simply to build a stadium. It is to build a stadium and also redevelop or actually develop the a Basin. neighborhood that is down there now that's basically industrial, decaying, and could be developed. And that's, I think, part of the plan. Wouldn't you be on board with that if they said, look, yes, we're going to build a stadium. We're also going to build social housing, retail stores, community centers, etc., as part of a new development that I call Peel Town, because it's right next door to Griffin Peel Town. And right next Peel door Town. to you. Yeah. Wouldn't, wouldn't that be good? Why would sure, we be against that? as long as they that? put some social housing along the first baseline and some more on the third. All right. You know, I'm, try <laughs> I'm trying to understand trying, the Karen, bottom line to... here is that they want a stadium that costs a billion dollars and no matter how you dress this up with all sorts of other things social housing whatever the bottom line it's a stadium that will be used in five or six years maybe because i think tampa bay is playing us for patsies and they're really not going to do this they're going to just do this to exert pressure on locals to in tampa well, what's bay wrong to... with having a downtown we need a downtown what stadium. are we going to put in one. there Put in rock shows, put in concerts. You can do a lot of things. And what's going to happen to the big O? Do we just implode the, the whole thing? Yes, we, we hope that it implodes. We use yes. it for we, we blow yeah. it up for a movie. It's a perfect. World's wow. biggest aquarium would not be a bad idea. Yeah. Either, okay, but, but but the big question here is that is Montreal a baseball town? What has changed that it was was it was the big O the okay. reason we it's weren't a, a baseball good, town? That's a, that's a fair question. Fan. No, no, that's a fair you, question. If you build it, will they come? Will they come? Yes, they will. I'll tell you. I at least I think you'll come because you when we. We still had a good competitive team. We were putting thirty and 40,000 people in the Big O. But this when is they for sold half off that team, team for scrap in six years. and got rid of all the good players, it's like anything else. Yes, people right. stopped coming. So but if we could do that, five, six be great. years down the road for half a team. Well, we'll get the entire team, Bill. They're not going to give us half the players. We get well, a whole no, team. Tampa Bay is the so we have some games here and some games there. Because it's something pipe dream, is better it's than nothing. Dream. The citizens no, I'm will all revolt. for it. I think you should get on board. So you're for it and you're against it. And I, just you're in think, the middle. I just think it's a pipe okay. dream. I don't no, think it I is. just don't. I, I think that this could be. First of all, no matter what our city has done, it's going to go over budget. Yes. Right. But that's that's to be. That's it's, anything. It's, if it will cost, Dominique Anglade spoke out today and said this is BS or something. It was it was very strong language. How, if taxpayers are involved, if taxpayers have said flat out they don't want to be. No, involved. they don't. They're right. But the team is not asking for money. It's asking for things like. Uh, tax advantages, so if they're billed down there, they don't have to perhaps they get a, a grant of some kind of a, a, a loan that they can pay back. You know, I'd like a tax advantage. Okay. Can I, can I Aaron, have a tax I love advantage? baseball. I was a season ticket holder at the old Big O. Love baseball more than anything. Love the Expos. I just don't think this will fly, and okay. I don't think it should fly. I would but a lot of people one other do. thing. Beyond building a community down that area, and clearly that area needs to be developed. It's a shame that it hasn't been. Think about one other thing that I don't think has been brought up, and that's naming rights to a stadium. Do you know how much they just spent to rename the Staples Center in L.A.? No. Take what? a wild guess. 50 Five. bucks? $700 million. No. Crypto.com bought naming rights for $700 million. 
That's money in the bank too. They don't need to get this from traditional sources, including taxpayers to make this work. I'll leave it at that. That's crypto. That's Let's interesting though. If it, if the money did come from elsewhere. It's not good to well, come do, from elsewhere. Who's going to name a Desjardins stadium? Desjardins would spend, I'm sure. You think? 700 right? 30, 50 million dollars for naming rights? Well, Videotron is experienced with stadiums. Yes, right? usually ones that sit empty. Could they pick the one up in Quebec and... You know? Yeah, okay. very expensive to move by truck. Be, mo okay. All right, let's go on to one other thing before we introduce our special guest for tonight. So the other thing is the chaos that's going on now. They changed travel rules, right? Actually, as of just this couple of days ago, there are people staying in what they describe as penitentiaries for hotel quarantine right now. The government make a mistake by doing this again? Have we overreacted to the latest Omicron issue? Well, you maybe because apparently it is more contagious but less violent. Right? Isn't that the situation? So far. Also, what about these quick tests? You know, the government's the talking a lot tests. about the rapid tests, giving seven for for family with kids. When are we going to get those into pharmacies? When are we finally in Europe, in in England, in France? They've had the, the States, quick tests. You can go to a pharmacy and get it done for what free. What is yet, going on? Yet, while doing all this, they've just announced that uh, you can have up to twenty people at a holiday yeah. gathering. Well, we've got more cases than we've had in six, eight months. Right. I, I don't get it at all. I mean, they just change the rules and they will continue to be changed as days goes by. Which makes it so hard for the average person out there to understand what they're supposed to do. And if you're going to, to travel, you don't know to. what you're doing. You know. Are you yeah. coming in and out? All right. We're going and to the take rapid tests make it fast. I think, and make them free. If, if they can give them to yeah. people and they are giving them to some businesses, why not offer them to people as well? Yeah. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Let's take our break and meet our special guest. It is our great, well... Goodish pleasure to introduce. Whoa, no, I've great, been, I've no, been great downgraded. Pleasure. You've been no, dissed. You know, David Acker, who is in fact um, the creative director of Super Dogs. He is the co-owner of the Comedy Nest in Montreal, the city's only full-time English comedy venue. This is correct. He is a comedian in his own right, and he is a magician. In fact, one of the most renowned magicians on the planet, having penned several books on the subject, and he tells David Copperfield he's got nothing on him. I feel like you've, this intro built very nicely. Thank you for that. That was the okay. right order. So question. Yeah. Canines or comics? Who do you like better? Uh, I like petting comedians better. That doesn't sound right. No, it uh, sounds very no, sick, actually. No, that was inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. Very inappropriate. Um, the uh, answer is, uh, well, I mean, working with dogs, it's a pure joy. I mean, you get up, you see their smiling faces. You don't get that out of comedians. They're never smiling. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. How do you go from doing stand-up, which you've done for most of your adult life, yes. to dogs? Uh, well, um, I actually did other stuff Bill didn't even mention. Uh, which is right for television for years and uh, the super dogs about 10 years ago were looking for new content new ways to do their shows so they brought me on board uh, oh, hold on a sec yeah. super dogs were looking for new content these they are were. dogs running around a ring doing tricks what possible new content could there be no. well now they go counterclockwise <laughs> oh, yeah okay yeah do they that's give why call? they brought you on board that was one of right. my uh, okay. that was one of my uh, first ideas and we would be remiss in not mentioning that there's a super dogs musical taking place at the Siegel Center up until December the 18th. Uh, 19th, 19th. 19th. That's yes. actually unprecedented. The Superdogs musical is a weird hybrid, and I mean weird in the best possible sense, of an actual mus musical production with uh, very talented actors and singers um, working with a Superdogs cast who are part of the overall production. And the storyline is that there's a young girl with a dog who's trying to get into the Super Dogs. So that's actually uh, a real departure from anything we've ever done before, and that's running right now uh, in Montreal. Okay, yeah. which, which still doesn't now. It, can you go back? So you, you're you're hired by the Super Dogs people to write to refresh what they're doing. Well, yeah, to to write new new because really, I mean, a little bit like acrobats, dogs can only do 15 or 20 or 30 things. And you want to package these uh, in different ways and more theatrical okay. ways. These dogs are just playing. They're playing. All, they're not. It's not a traveling circus. They're all the uh, family pets of the trainers that rescue perform dogs with us. At that. Many of them are rescues, absolutely. Um, and they come and play. But uh, you want to package that play in a way that's sort of theatrical and entertaining for an audience. So that is what they brought me on board to do years ago. And originally it was going to be a three-week contract or something, and it turned out to be uh, an eight-year deal at this point. And does this thing tour? I mean, do you? 
the Superdogs perform all over the country, but it doesn't tour uh, in in the sense of getting on a bus. They, we have um, uh, trainers we work with in pretty much every part of Canada. So when we're in Vancouver, we work with eight or ten trainers that live in Vancouver, Edmonton, Calgary, etc. Uh, so um, uh, these dogs aren't um, uh, aren't sitting in a you know on a bus for six months. They're they're going home every night after the show. Hundreds of aromas in the there would be. <laughs> they're going to the dog run. That is a good point. That's a good so point. Wait, so these dogs, if you like in Vancouver, for example, are that you have Vancouver. Based dogs, 100%. Or? It's it's all trainers that live in Vancouver, oh, or okay. mostly, um, and they're given they, they're given a, sort of a list of skills to work on three or four or five months ahead of time that kind of fit with the show that we're doing. Um, and uh, in the case of the musical, we have a few uh, trainers from Quebec, a couple from Ontario, because we needed some particular skills. Uh, but it's, uh, as I say, it's a bit of a departure from what we normally do. So we're experimenting in some sense with that. Okay. Now, when, when Bill and I talked about having you come, and I know Bill's a big fan, as I am as well. I've That's seen you kind. perform many, many times. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about what COVID has done to comedy clubs because yes. we know how, how hard that has been. Well, I can certainly tell you when we were not allowed to operate, it was very difficult to make money. <laughs> but then when they let us reopen, uh, it went uh, swimmingly. As soon as we reopened, we've essentially, and, and as you know, these numbers have expanded uh, at, over the course of the summer and into the fall as they've let more and more people attend shows. But we were essentially sold out from the day we reopened. Yes. Uh, but, all, all the way through. But David, more to the point, yes. what Aaron means, I think, is what has COVID done to comedy in the sense of political correctness? Our comics... No, that's not is that what, what you I meant. meant? No, it feels I like thought, thought that's what, what you meant, Aaron. I, I didn't feel that's what Aaron meant. I didn't understand that. Nope. Yeah. But now that you mentioned it... Yeah, but not what did you have a follow-up question? I did not. Bill apparently did, though. What has COVID done to comedy on the more metaphysical stage? Um... Uh, well, more metaphysically, the, we do need more distance between the comic and the audience. Um, uh, in the sense of political correctness, COVID uh, is, di didn't have a direct impact. Uh, political correctness is an entirely different discussion uh, related to um, a, a kind of a movement on social media. But we're more careful uh, today. Our comics were Our careful. comedians woke. I think they're, uh, <laughs> they well, even the they term, woke. I'm not even sure the term woke is woke, woke anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the answer to your question is, um, uh, I think people have always been, or they've always, there's always been the potential to offend with comedy. In fact, I think there was a Joan Rivers quote from years ago that was, um, uh, I'll get that, uh, from years ago that was, um, uh, if you're not offending somebody with every joke, you're not doing your job. Uh, now you have to make choices as to who you want to offend and when, um, maybe more uh, thoroughly than before, uh, because um, uh, one choice on one stage that maybe was a poor choice can spread much more quickly than it used to uh, before social media. But isn't that a terrible thing as a stand-up where you're trying to craft an act, you know, go out there and do what you do, and now we have to worry in the back of your mind, oh, I can't do this because it might offend this particular person, when in the past you really never had to worry about that. Uh, I think you always had to worry Did about you? it in the sense of the audience that's directly in front of you. I mean, in the end, you're trying to entertain. That's certainly your first goal. Um, so you did have to worry about that. The problem now is the repercussions are, are exponentially greater. It's one thing to do a joke that doesn't work that night and you realize, you know, I've crossed a line and maybe I don't want to play with this, this concept or this premise. It's quite another to do a joke. You were wrong that night. Um, it turns up on social media and now you have a real problem outside of that. Um, so I do think that comedians have to consider those, pro those challenges much more than they ever had to. Okay, I, I would imagine as well, and I'm, I don't want to sort of take up all the questions, but I'm just thinking in the creative process, when you don't have a live audience or someone you can work material to decide what to keep, what not to keep, COVID kept everyone in that, you know, in that field from Zoom doing zone. That. How hard right. was that? Uh, well, uh, 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 one advantage of COVID, uh, <laughs> thank God there was a pandemic. Uh, one upside to COVID in terms of writing new material was you could write material about something that everybody was experiencing at the right. same time. It's, it's something we all had in common. Um, it's actually a lesson I learned years ago. Um, I played a uh, uh, I played the Riviera in Las Vegas, which has since been blown up. Uh, it doesn't exist because anymore. Because of you? Uh, that, the uh, Riviera oh. no longer exists. That's where Casino don't, was Don't shot. tell me you had reservations No, there. I'm saying was that because of you? Did you have something to do with the uh, fact that... No, no. although the okay. first time Bill and I met uh, and did an interview for the Gazette was at Ben's Deli, and we all know what happened to that, so yeah, right. I don't have high hopes for Green Spot. But... Um, 
the <laughs> the uh, uh, and, but one thing we learned uh, performing in Las Vegas, and there is a bit of a parallel, was that the only thing everybody in that audience has in common, because they're coming from all over the world, is Las Vegas. So your opening ten minutes pretty much had to be about the casino and right. the city and anything you might have experienced getting there, um, and then you could go into your jokes about relationships and TV commercials or whatever it else it happened to be. In the same sense, coming out of COVID, um, everybody was opening with material about COVID. It's the one thing we all had in common, and then you had a bit of a departure after that. Do you have and a so, good COVID joke? I do, do not. Yes, you do. No, I don't have a good COVID joke. Yes, you did. I have, well, I tell you, the one thing we, uh, uh, when COVID uh, started, of course, we were all out of work. The comedians uh, had to find jobs. Uh, so the first thing I did was uh, I hired myself out to places that couldn't afford plexiglass uh, as a mime. Uh, you had to be really sharp when the yeah, health inspector yeah, showed up. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> like that. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. All right, thanks very much. Now, Bill Appreciate mentioned it. right off the top about you being a renowned magician. I'm a renowned magician. Now, you've actually written I'm, books on magic? I have, yes. but I'm a little rusty. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little okay. rusty. Bill asked if I would do something. Okay. I yes. thought I could maybe potentially. I feel like I brought a deck of cards here, but okay. I think it's all falling on the floor right now. Yeah, I didn't. Well, okay, I think this will work. Did you want to see a quick trick? Yes. I have a psychic magic trick. But I'm not great at it. It's right. I'm a little bit rusty, so I'm going to put on a hat for this to warm up my head. And uh, we're going to try this out. And Bill, I've done I've done tricks for you before, so I'm going to do it to yeah, this do side. It right. that's yeah. right. Do it to that I side. Think really this will work out okay. Um, Leslie, anybody yes. from out of town here? If you could just, uh, t I don't even want you to take it. Just touch a card, touch any card, and I'm going to show. Up. Just touch one, and can then we're going to. Look gonna, away while I it's touch It's going to be fine. Card? It doesn't matter if I know which one. Great. And I'm going to lift this so you can see what the card is, and I'm going to show it to the camera. Now, there's no mirrors in here. There's no. Way. Are you able to see that? Okay. Great. Uh, and now here's what I'm going to try to do. Normally I would just tell you what the card is, but I can't, um, I'm not, I'm, I'm rusty. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to narrow it down. I'm going to go through the deck and take out a, what I think it's going to be one of these. I'm going to narrow it down to like six cards. I feel like it could be that one. Could be that one. I feel like it could be one of these two. So, uh, so I'm going to, I'll just go through these cards and you just tell me if it's one of these, uh, one of these six. Okay. Okay. And then, uh, and I'll try. Is it? Is it? Uh, I, in fact, I don't, it doesn't even matter. I'll just go through all of them. Is it one of those? Yes, it's in there. Okay. Can you take that packet? Yes. And I'm going to concentrate, and I'm going to tell you what your card is. So here we go. This happens sometimes. I'm really sorry, everybody. I might have concentrated too hard. Can you count the cards that are in that packet? Just count how many there are. There was six. How many are there now? There are five. Five. Is your card in there anymore? My card has mysteriously disappeared. This happens sometimes. I might have sucked it. This happens. I might have sucked it into my hat. There's a card in the hat. Can you take the card out? Wow. Take, just show it to the camera. Did I get it? Yes. I got it? Got I got it. it. Wow, that's good. <laughs> You're not rusty. And I was watching. I did I see did it. You. I have no I, idea. I did it. <laughs> that we did works. it together, everybody. Wow. But I, I was watching your hands. I was watching his hands too. Well, and I was watching your hat because you it was were not obvious. watching his hat or you it was didn't obvious see the, the hat. I was, was part watching of it. both. It was obvious. Yeah. And of course, wow. when you Excellent. finish these tricks, do you explain ever how you do them? Or yes. Will it, you explain this one? Yes. <laughs> but not now. I guess. Correct. Right. You didn't you say do, how long do, after. Did right. you do birthday okay. parties? Years ago, yeah, do, when I was a kid. That's how all magicians start. We do. We all start a birthday party. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and kids are the hardest audience which makes them the best audience actually it's good preparation for stand-up frankly have you ever done a magic trick with a dog uh, we had a whole show years ago uh, two years ago with the super dogs called Abracadabark <gasps> and uh, not only uh, did we do magic tricks with the dogs but the dogs were doing magic tricks themselves that's one of the things they brought me on board for was to write stuff like that Wow what yeah. breed is the best uh, magician um, Border collies are generally the smartest uh, dogs, so I would they say do they're everything the best better. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but lab. bearded bearded collies look more like wizards. So they were better yeah. with the wizard. Visually, tricks. they're better. How, how does a dog do magic trick with no opposable thumbs? Though? You'd be you'd be amazed what what you can do with a tail. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what that means. I have no idea. What that means. <laughs> it's not this kind of broadcast. <laughs> can can I ask, given the fact that you're as renowned as as you are, yes, who do you consider to be one of the best magicians Doug in the Henning, world? Doug Henning, for sure. Uh, I actually love Doug Henning. I miss oh. I miss he that. He passed uh, away. He did pass away, so he's not as good. So Harder. I, the um, uh, <laughs> that was too soon. That was too soon. It's not too uh, soon. The uh, Doug Henning was actually. Um, uh, 
I wouldn't say an influence, but somebody I watched closely when I was a kid uh, in the 70s uh, because he brought a kind of joy to magic that a lot of magicians, uh, magicians were sort of mysterious at that time, um, and he was just sort of happy and playful, was and that was a, that was a lovely playful. energy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but more recently, I mean, if you watch Penn and Teller fool us, you're going to see some of the best magicians who ever lived, and they're doing, a lot of those guys are doing stuff that they invented themselves, so that that's, that's a show where you're going to see people you might not otherwise get a chance to see doing really creative stuff. Okay, one, one last question. When you watch, like, um, America's Got Talent, where every now and then there'll be a magician on, do you look at that and try to understand the trick, or what do you what do you do when you You'd be it? amazed how often I get fooled uh, by magic, despite the fact that I'm embedded in it. There's, um, uh, there's people that are just... Um, for, for years, magic went through a bit of a renaissance with what we call the effect. In other words, the trick that the audience sees. Right now, magic is going through a renaissance with method. So um, uh, for, for years, you were seeing different kinds of tricks using methods that we were all kind of familiar with. Now you're seeing completely different methods to do tricks. So there's a whole new explosion of creativity uh, um, in wow. the technique, and that's been fascinating to watch. What's the name of the great magician? Uh, well, maybe you're not going to say he's great. David, uh, the guy who... Co Copperfield? No, no, the guy who was in the ball above... David Ben. Yes. Uh, no, not David Ben. No, no, so uh, David, David Ben is another magician. Uh, uh, David Blaine. Yes, me. David, David Blaine. David Blaine is a great magician, uh, and he, he He's kind brought of, a lot of attention back to magic. As a matter of fact, he kind of rebooted magic yeah. in the 90s when it was pretty much on its way out, long after guys like Dung Henning. Right. Uh, and David Copperfield had sort of transitioned to live shows, not so much on television. Uh, David Blaine absolutely re He's rebooted He's great at card tricks too, isn't he? A master. Yeah. 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 So now, I, I know we don't have a whole lot of time, but I know you've done one trick. Is the rust sort of worn off? Could you maybe do one more? Would you consider I don't doing know. more? I don't know if I have, I have. I have one thing with me here, and I don't know if it's considered a trick. What do I have here? I have. This is, a, this is something I've been working on. Uh, this is a, uh, a Christmas tree bulb, uh, which you can buy um, at, a, at a dollar store, or, or you can get for free at any mall. Uh, and I grabbed uh, I grabbed this one and it's actually a it's a bit of a uh, like a, um, uh, a holiday spirit tester oh right yeah I don't know do you want to uh, uh, if I if you put it in your hand yes uh, I don't know if you have any it should light up if you have any holiday spirit is there anything there's not much happening there sometimes <laughs> it helps if you uh, I'm gonna I'll try it but I'm gonna sing a little bit hang on a second you might want to uh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, there we go. Do you see the? Can you see wow. a bit of light there? Wow. I don't know if you can see it on the close up. Holiday cheer yeah. right there. Oh, what fun it is to ride! It's not bad. A little bit of holiday cheer. You can you can keep that and keep working on it. Jingle bells. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Now we get to hear Bill sing. <laughs> Dave. A pleasure to have you. Where do you go from here? Super Cats? Uh, spectacular will be the name of that show. Uh, no, we, uh, we wind down Super Dogs till December 19th, and then we take a couple of weeks off, which is going to be welcome. Do you own a dog yourself? I don't, actually. I travel so much, I didn't feel right, it was that's right. appropriate that's to have right, a dog right. stuck in Not home. appropriate. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. I have a giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> On that happy I'm a note, polar bear. yeah, I, I guess that will wrap it up for us, uh, David. Uh, thank you so much for My being pleasure. here. Thanks Very much appreciate it. That's going to wrap up another episode of the Corner Booth, and we will, and we will be will back see you again next in a week, week right? Yes, yeah. sir. Right. Okay. <laughs>